Hey guys, welcome to another Hip Hughes History Lecture, this time from my awesome classroom that I love so much. What I'm going to do for you in the next few minutes, guys, is have a little chat with you about a really awesome book, a pamphlet written in 1775 by Thomas Paine, and it's called Common Sense. I like calling it the book of duh. So what this is, guys, is basically seen as a piece of literature in American history that's really going to serve as a piece of persuasion, as a catalyst to launch people into wanting to revolt against the country, Great Britain, the colonial power. And that's a pretty, pretty powerful book if it's going to convince you to pick up a gun and start shooting at the Redcoats. So let's break this bad boy up into seven big sections, but I like starting off by kind of stating that I call it the book of duh. In other analogies, I've talked about Tina Turner and Ike Turner, and this is really the moment, today's world, where Tina would go on Oprah and she'd kind of have that, girl, you need to leave. But, of course, we're talking about a book and Oprah is Thomas Paine, but nevertheless, it's going to have the same type of effect of really kind of waking America up. So it's a really great book to get to know, um, and especially if you're writing an essay talking about why the uh, colonists are going to rebel against Great Britain. So seven basic, basic arguments. We'll just kind of break them up right now. Number one. Number one is Great Britain, yo, you an island. What you do an island running a continent? I mean, that's ridiculous. You know, the idea of, let's say, I don't know, Jamaica running Africa. Uh, really makes no sense. So the idea that an island nation in Europe is going to be able to successfully kind of, you know, drive policy for a continent that's, you know, thousands of miles away is just ludicrous. So um, argument number one is, yo, you're an island. Argument number two is that we're particularly not British anymore. You know, uh, the colonial power certainly is Great Britain and that is probably more of kind of a reason because of history and power and economics, but in 1775, yo, we mad diverse. Um, you know, there's Germans and there's uh, French and there's all types of Europeans, especially Northern Europeans at this time, the old immigration, that um, is a pain in this kind of sermon is saying, you know, we're not British anymore. We've diversified, so it's time to kind of move on and not be part of the British Empire because we're distinctly different. We're American. And that's what makes this book so important. It's really one of the first kind of American defining pieces of literature, giving us this kind of a sense of identity. So, uh, argument number two, we're really not British anymore. Argument number three, yo, mama. Really, you know, we, you've heard the term mother country, right? So using that analogy um, in this sermon that Payne is launching, he's like, what kind of mother does what this mother does? You know, yeah, maybe she's my mother, but she's a bad mother, and we're grown up now. You know, certainly you, you owe something to your mother if she raises you and loves you, but if she raises you and violates your natural rights and doesn't give you representation and, you know, taxes you as punishment, and when you're 18, get the hell out, go live your life, go live your life. So argument number three is your mama, right, that your mother, if it's a mother country, isn't uh, doing its motherly duties. Number four is bang, bang. And this is the concept of European war. Great Britain's in a war like every Monday. So if you're the colonists and you're kind of strapping your hook to this boat that's going to war all the time, we're getting constantly entangled in European alliances and, you know, the... Uh, French and Indian War is an example of that, of kind of Europe's crap spilling over in the continent, in the North American continent. You know, that's not cool. So certainly, I give the analogy that if you go to the cafeteria table, you don't want to sit at the drama table. And certainly, Europe is the drama table, and Payne says, oh, let's sit over there. Argument number five is basically the idea of distance. Um, Great Britain is literally 1,000 miles away, and of course there's no internet or phones or even the post office. So therefore communication is a problem, um, and having them deal with us that far away and having that time gap, there's going to be certainly problems, just pragmatic problems about dealing with issues. So distance is a big argument that Payne lays out. It's the bell. It's time for school. It's time for learning. Argument number six is the idea of kind of our Puritan heritage, or at least the idea that one of the founding principles of the colonies was kind of serving as a refuge from Europe, and a certainly a religious refuge from kind of the Catholic Church and uh, the Church of England. Uh, we're coming over here to separate ourselves from all that drama. So going back to kind of historical context of, you know, the Puritan foundational stuff, uh, Payne makes that argument um, that that should kind of lead us to the idea that we should 
we should still be separated or we should be separated officially. And finally, the last argument or the seventh argument is the idea of best interest. And this really goes to colonialism. We are, uh, you know, Great Britain's punk. And Paine says basically that they're never going to have our best interest. They're always going to treat us like a punk because they're always going to be interested in you know, London before they're going to be interested in Boston. So therefore, it is that much more important that we rise up and we revolt and we create our own separate country so we can rule ourselves and we can have our own representation, protect our own natural rights, and give our people consent of the governed so we can you know, rule the day. So there you go, guys. Common Sense, 1775, Thomas Paine, seven arguments. We'll see you next time. You should click links below there in the description because uh, your brain's going to grow ten times its size. Uh, thanks for watching. Where attention goes, energy flows. It fuses out. We'll see you later. Yay!